around with augmented reality with PowerPoint and a really cool app. I'm sure we've all seen really cool augmented reality demos, like those for the Microsoft HoloLens, but I wanted to make a tutorial about how we could all start making our own customized augmented reality experiences today without any programming knowledge. Stay tuned to find out how. What you'll need for this is, first of all, the free Orasma app found on iOS or Android. For the most simple effects, if you want to just play around, the app is actually all you need. But if you want to make really cool custom stuff, I strongly recommend using PowerPoint as well. And if you follow my channel, you've seen just how creative you can be with PowerPoint in terms of animation effects as well as your video and photo editing needs. You can also use some other editing program or effects maker too, if you like. The way this works is that you first need a trigger, which can be a screenshot or a custom uploaded image that once it's in your app's camera will activate the overlay, which can be any of the things shown here. I particularly like to use the first frame of a video as a trigger, then have the video play on top of it like I did with my photo here. To give you a quick demo, let's start off with the simplest kind of augmented reality experience or aura to create using just the app. Let's take a look at my phone screen. So you can see the app here in the top left corner. Let's go ahead and open it. And if it's your first time opening it, you'll have to quickly create an account to get started. And I already did that so I can go to the home screen here. At this point, I can create a new aura by pressing here on the plus sign at the top, which will open up your camera so you can take a screenshot trigger. Let's take a walk outside actually and recreate that cool plant animation we saw earlier, but this time in a real garden plot. We now have to take a picture in the square that will serve as our trigger. Keep an eye on the bar up here to make sure it's green or at least yellow when you take it or else it won't work well. Here's a good place to take it right here. So we press the button over here to do so. Now the trigger is captured so we have to choose our overlay. And what's great about the app versus the website, which I'll also show you in a bit, is that you have a ton of these pre-made overlays to choose from. Although many of them are frankly kind of cheesy or silly, though there are some really nice gems in there as well. I'll choose this beanstalk here, which you saw in the intro video. I like how it slowly reveals what it is as it's breaking through the ground, and it has some cool built-in sound effects too. Now it gives you a preview of what it looks like as an overlay on your trigger here. And on this screen, you can also move and resize it as you like. And then on some overlays, you can rotate them as well. I actually like how it is right here in the middle, and since I have it the way I want it, I'm gonna go ahead and save. And you can put it into private so only you can see it, or set it to public so that others who follow your channel can see it too. Now that it's saved, you just go to your app home screen again and press this button here. Then you find your trigger image in the screen to activate the overlay. And there you go. What's cool is that you can slowly rotate your camera too, and the overlay will rotate with it. Not perfectly, but enough to look pretty neat. And here's another example of a cool black scorpion I put onto these steps. It's not super realistic looking or anything, but still kind of fun to play with and lots of interesting possibilities about where you could put this thing. More and more as we're presenting and teaching things to others, we'll have to really think about how we can weave in augmented reality elements as the technology to make it advances and becomes more accessible. So let's now head on over to the website here so we can create our own custom overlays as well. So type in this URL up here. Now log in with the same account that you did earlier. 
And at this point, you might think that we go up here, but for some reason, this button never works for me. Maybe it's my Chrome browser, not sure. So I actually go to my auras here and go to click to upload trigger image here. And on this screen, we can choose a trigger image from our computer. So let's quickly jump to that PowerPoint animation sequence that I created earlier as an example. So here is what the slides look like. And you know, you have your typical timed PowerPoint animations here on the animation timeline. And I'm not gonna go step by step about how to create this here, but if you wanna learn how to make cool animations in general, you can pretty much go to any video on my channel because that's exactly what it's all about. Once you have whatever animation sequence you wanna work with ready, you can then begin this process. So the idea here is that we take the very first frame of this video, or the one that says fun with this first slide, and make that our trigger. And an easy way to do this is to go File, Save As, My PC, and then choose PNG or JPEG as your file type. And by the way, you can use this technique to export images of every single one of your slides in your PowerPoint presentations. For now, when you get this pop-up, choose just this one to export just this particular slide and you should be set. You now have your trigger. Now we can move to making our video overlay from the rest of the slides. And to do that, we first have to make sure that everything is sequenced and timed properly. So to check that, I'll just hit presentation mode here. Perfect. And I actually recommend that if possible, you try to end your sequence on the same frame as the one you started on. So that way, once the animation ends, it's a smoother transition back to your real life trigger. Once you're happy with the animations, the last step is to export your video. So go to File, Export, then make a video, and save it there. We now have both our trigger and overlay ready, so we can go back to our online studio here and into this menu. First, we add our trigger. So choose that same file we had earlier. And by the way, if you get a message saying that your trigger is sparse and won't track well, meaning the trigger might not work, first just ignore that and try it anyway because it often does work. Then if you find that it really doesn't work too well, see if you can add something around the trigger and video, like a cool border, and that should help with the tracking. You can also play around with the masking options here and the help section of the website tells you more on how to do that. But to keep us going here, let's just use this trigger as is and then go to our overlay on the next page. So go here and then find it in your files. and then just resize and position it on top of the trigger. And I actually like to uncheck the fade in checkbox just to make it smoother. At this point, what's cool is you can actually test it out right on your computer without even needing to print it. You can just go to your app and into the camera view and then point it at your screen and it will turn on. Not bad. And there are lots of advanced options you can play with here too, including whether the aura stays on the user's screen after it plays, whether it fades in, or whether it loops, etc. You can even stack multiple auras on top of each other, so I encourage you to explore these options as well. Once you're happy with the way the preview looks, go ahead and click Next. Type in a name for your aura,
and then click Save. Once you do that, the Aura is automatically public so that your friends or anyone else who follows your channel can see it. I'm actually just going to hit Unshare right now to make it private so that only my phone can see it since this was just an example. And within a few seconds, this should be synced with my phone so I can activate the Aura in the app's camera view. So that's just an example of how you can make your own custom overlay in the online studio. And I did the same thing with the video phase two, which you saw here. I made a trigger of the first frame of the video and then had the video file as the overlay. The tip I wanted to share though is that the original video was widescreen, so I had to crop it to the size of the picture frame, which was six by four inches. So to crop out those sides, I made a slide in PowerPoint with the six by four dimensions by going to design slide size and then custom slide size and then putting in that six by four size that I wanted. I then made sure the video was cropped exactly to this slide size. and then made sure that it plays automatically at the start. Then I simply exported this slide to video like we did before. So just a quick trick there for making custom video sizes if you wanted to use the same effect with, with a picture frame. The other quick tip I have is if you're printing your trigger, make sure it works after printing too, because for my face, my printer originally made my colors a bit dull, so the trigger actually didn't work in real life. So in that case, just make sure that you're printing at the highest quality on your printer, or in the worst case, you can actually make a new trigger of the object already printed to guarantee that those new colors will work for the trigger. So that was just a quick tutorial to get you started with experimenting with augmented reality. And this is especially useful for advertising, for example, or teaching lots and lots of possibilities. So go out and explore and please let me know what you come up with. And of course, for other cool effects, check out my other videos and see you for my next one.